My name is Hoi, I'm a consultant psychiatrist, and today I would like to talk about anxiety and stress-related disorders. So it's a bit of a difficult group because it's a very mixed group, and previously some of these disorders were called neurosis. The concept of neurosis is more or less gone, and I try to explain it here with something I learned, uh, which is more or less uh, and the example of depression. So many severe depression as well seen as endogenous. So they came from the inside and nobody knew what there was a trigger. There was also some uh, things which were called reactive depression. So let's say the loss of a, um, depression caused by the loss of a role, a loss of a family member, a loss of a pet. So severe depression caused by these disorders and they were called reactive depression and between them there was these um, anxiety or depressive dis depressive disorder that um, were neither reactive because the reaction might have been there to something but the reaction was completely out of proportion and sometimes the reaction wasn't uh, even clear to what, what the trigger was and uh, but there was a trigger and in this respect people responded in a neurotic way to the trigger so that's what we call um, neurotic or neurosis at the moment uh, some classification systems have changed to this because a concept uh, is something which hasn't been really verified and it was a concept which was very much psychoanalytic and they just um, cluster all these um, anxiety disorders which come under this or stress-related disorders in um, anxiety disorders, obsessive compulsive disorder and related disorder, trauma and stress, stress-related disorders or dissociative disorders where people behave um, in a way that they don't even um, perceive their own actions. So some are like hysteria, then there are somatic uh, symptoms where people perceive uh, pain. So the pain is um, caused by something, a trigger, an anxiety or trauma. And um, then we call it uh, neurotic pain or we can call it uh, somatic pain. So in this respect, what I would like to, um, to explain here is that the um, the um, diagnostic symptoms are not always very clear and if you are, uh, ask your doctor you just need to get your doctor explain um, what he means and some of that is the fact that you know then if they're in different ages and different training they will mean something different when they talk about neurotic anyway so um, some classification symptoms um, use uh, common neurosis as a synonym for anxiety and phobic disorder. We spoke about anxiety disorder, panic disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, or specific phobias before. There are stress-related disorders, acute stress reaction, which can be an acute, acute anxiety. The problem here is that some of this, some of these diagnoses are more or less based on the symptoms some are based on the causes. So let's say a depression, which is more or less or an anxiety, which is uh, neurotic and uh, maybe um, related to panic disorders, um, might have the same symptoms as a stress-related disorder or PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. The symptoms are the same, but the explanation for the symptoms is different and this makes sometimes um, the diagnosis very different and you get from doctor you go from doctor to doctor and then you get a different diagnosis and it's not that people see it completely different but they learn different names for the same disorder Ob obsessive compulsive disorder is uh, also seen as an anxiety disorder because anxiety and obsess obsessive compulsive disorder very often go hand in hand so these are what they call common neuroses. Then there's a neurosis which are less common or are a little bit um, unusual, 
So let's say dysmorphophobia is anxiety of looking different from others or being unhappy with their own looks. Uh, hysterical disorder when people have outbursts of sh uh, shouting, anxiety and uh, uh, other disorders which are related to hysteria are conversion disorders where people in their anxiety are unable to move, uh, to raise their hands or doing any other things. There are dissociative disorders when people are so anxious that they can't remember things or feel that they are in a not in a real world or in a different world. People call it being in a matrix very often related to this film. And there are somatoform disorders where symptoms, physical symptoms, are representations of neurotic um, experiences. Then there's um, disorders we um, very, of, or very often even don't know about that. Uh, these are uh, symptoms like Kuro, where people in Asia have the anxiety that their penis moves into the body. Um, eating disorders are sometimes culturally bound anorexia nervosa. Um, however, you would say in the Western world, these are standard diagnoses. Um, but they're just much, much less common in other societies. And um, one of the uh, things which is important to know is that anxiety is very common in the population and uh, usually a bit of anxiety can be very uh, reasonable. You know, being careful and anxious to go around at four o'clock in the middle of the night um, might be quite reasonable if you are in a dangerous area. Um, so anxiety uh, can be very different uh, from, pa uh, from person to person, but uh, it's not always a disease. But if it's affecting into the day-to-day -day life, it may be seen as a disease. Usually comorbidity is very common. Usually people with schizophrenia can have exce exceeding excessive anxiety, people with depression, um, people with personality disorder or substance abuse. And um, as we said before, anxiety can be related to other physical symptoms, tachycardia, the feeling of being unable to breathe and uh, swallowing uh, air or being um, having chest uh, tightness. So these are very common symptoms and usually um, the treatment is a combination of pharmacotherapy and psychotherapy, but we might come to this in a later video if people are interested in that. Please let, please let us know. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, little talk. Um, usually in a hospital-based uh, psychiatry, this is more or less what we de see day to day, and uh, there won't be any day that we don't see anybody who has a suffering is severe anxiety. The interesting part where I was well, felt is when people really, really are anxious, then they're addicted to benzodiazepines. So medication can cause horrendous anxiety. And it's very, very difficult to withdraw some uh, people from medications which initially on the short term help against anxiety, which benzodiazepine do in the short term, but on the long term they make out of a minor anxiety, a massive anxiety. Right, okay, that's for today. And um, if you're interested, please subscribe to our channel, you, uh, Global Psychiatry Archives. We also have a journal uh, with the same name, which you can Google and uh, where we publish scientific articles. And I hope um, you enjoy this. So please subscribe to our channel. And if you have any interest helping us or even publishing, publishing a video on this channel, then you're very welcome to do so. Thanks a lot for your interest. And um, I wish you a nice day. Thank you. Bye-bye.